Hey everyone, I'm Casey, and you all know what we're doing today. For this week's Superman Analog, we're moving on from Sharon Ventura to Carla Soffin. The third Miss Marvel had a much longer history in the MCU and bore several identities. Much of it's tied up in one of my favorite books of all time, Thunderbolts. Today, we are talking about Carla Soffin, but she is best known as Moonstone. And I should note that she's actually Moonstone 2. But the first one was a minor villain who never really mastered his powers. He basically was just a punk who lucked into an alien artifact that gave him amazing powers. Powers that Carla Soffin wanted. You see, before she was a supervillain, she was Dr. Carla Soffin, a psychiatrist tasked with treating tormented villains. When she was introduced to Moonstone, she saw that he was an opportunity for her to gain power. So rather than treating her patient, she instead manipulated him into giving up the titular Moonstone, which he had bonded to, and then she claimed it for herself. Now that theme of manipulation will color nearly all of her future appearances. Okay, so before we go further, let's talk about the actual powers she got, because when I was a kid, this was the character whose powers I used to dream about having. After Captain Marvel, of course. The Shazam one, I guess I should clarify. So Moonstone started out as a Hulk villain, so people tend to forget that she's pretty buff. In fact, she's able to lift airliners and tank explosions. Plus, she can fly, she can manipulate energy, and she can phase through solid matter. I remember in one issue of Thunderbolts, there was a plane that was going down, and she was asked if she was strong enough to catch it. She pointed out that she was, but the plane wasn't, so she had to provide thrust to guide it down instead. After she set off as a supervillain, she became linked with the Masters of Evil, Baron Zemo's team, and took part in the Avengers Under Siege story, one of the all-time best Avengers stories. During that, she tangled with Monica Rambeau, Captain Marvel, and was thoroughly outclassed by the energy-based hero. Now, this set her to work with Zemo when he launched the Thunderbolts scheme in the wake of most of the Marvel superheroes apparently dying in battle against the mutant Onslaught, although in fact they were actually shunted away into a pocket dimension. On this team of heavy hitters, she was the powerhouse. And that's really saying something, because also on this team was Atlas, who was Power Man before Luke Cage and had the same abilities as Wonder Man, plus Ant-Man slash Giant Man growing powers, kinda, and I still feel comfortable saying that Soften was the heavy hitter on the team. Anyway, the idea was a bunch of villains took on heroic identities as a con. Great book, great idea, a little annoyed that it was less elegantly reused later for Dark Avengers, but whatever. During this time, Soften took on the identity of Meteorite and restricted her powers to throw people off. And as I said before, this is how I first knew her. She constantly vied for control of the team, fostering her teammates' enjoyment of the heroic role to sway them to rebel against Zemo. She assumed the role of de facto leader for a time, but remained the selfish villain in the group. As with the rest of the team, she struggled with her self-identity, especially when Hawkeye joined the team and became leader. She began a relationship with him in order to manipulate him, but had his altruism rub off on her a little, and it didn't really last. The team eventually traveled to the Counter-Earth from Heroes Reborn, where she encountered that world's version of Moonstone 1. Soften did what Soften does and took his Moonstone, exponentially increasing her powers for a time until both Moonstones were taken from her by a now benign Baron Zemo. She was comatose for a while, but woke up, joined the new Suicide Squad-esque version of the Thunderbolts that had risen up during this time, and eventually became the base for Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers, where this time she took on the role of Miss Marvel and sued poor Ultra Girl to make her stop wearing the OG costume. And this makes sense. Carol Danvers was rising in prominence, just about to become Captain Marvel. They both were similar looking blonde women with Dragon Ball Z powers. But more importantly, they shared a Kree connection. It turned out that the Moonstone was an ancient weapon used by ancient Kree superheroes. The helmet she wore in her first design always looked like a Kree helmet, and this explained why. Since then, I understand there was a Dark Avengers 2, Electric Boogaloo, where she pulled the same stunt, this time as Captain Marvel, and good luck with that. But the point I want to emphasize is that Dr. Carla Soffin is manipulative, and only out for herself, but can be swayed to do the right thing. She rarely plays the role of hero with any sincerity, but when she does, she makes an excellent Superman analog. Next time, we're gonna finish up our retrospective on the various Miss Marvels. But until then, stay super, man. Hey everyone, I just wanna thank you all for staying to the end of the video. Thank you for watching these. It's such an incredible experience seeing that people actually enjoy some of my weird rants about superhero stuff. If you have subscribed to the channel, and I really appreciate it if you did, you'll notice that we've launched some new content. 
this channel started as support for our podcast network and the goal is to try to get some shorter video length clips of the podcast up on the channel. So you'll see right now the two that I'm working on and we're hoping to get some more going from other shows. But I just wanted to let you know what those were. On that note, you should check out the show that goes along with this video series, Men of Steel. Check it out at certainpov.com. There's a link to our Discord server there where you can come and interact with us, see some sneak peeks for what we've got coming up. But otherwise, I hope you just have a great week.